All right, hey guys, and welcome to a brand new PSP GPU tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating an application that can dyna dynamically create sprites and meshes. Previously, we we're hard coding all of our vertex values, uh, and that results in uh, basically a code design that isn't really uh, sustainable for uh, dynamically generating uh, things like sprites. So to start off, let's review our code. We've removed the vertex uh, data, the uh, square and uh, index and indices here, uh, and we also still have most of the camera stuff in this as well. We have removed the draw lines here, uh, and we'll be uh, replacing that with our mesh and our um, system for sprites. So what is a mesh? A mesh is really just a simple structure that holds all the data that we really need for rendering. So this will be our vertices and our indices. So to de define a, uh, a mesh here, type def struct for and call it a mesh, and then inside the mesh, uh, we will need the data. So this will be uh, where we store the vertex data, and then we will also need the indices, which are unsigned shorts, and then you uh, and then we'll need the index count. So index count. To create a mesh, uh, it's pretty simple as well. We'll re have a function. It's gonna re re uh, return a mesh pointer and we'll be doing create mesh. And we need the vertex count and we need the index count. Now for the index count, uh, this will actually replace this variable here as well. So mesh pointer mesh is equal to malloc and we're gonna malloc the size of a mesh. We're going to return the mesh. So if malloc fails here, it will return null. So we'll have to return null as well. Then the next thing we need to do is we've got to create the space for our data. So we're going to have to run mesh and then data equals memoline and memoline uh, to the 16 boundary and then a size of uh, a vertex. And then times the vertex count. That will uh, basically create all the things that we need. So if this fails, we're gonna have to free the mesh and then return null. Next thing we'll create is the indices. So the indices are equal to memo line as well. We'll do memo line 16 again and size of u16 times the index count. If this fails to uh, allocate, do the same thing. We'll do free mesh and then return null, but we also have mesh data, so we have to free the mesh data first before we free the mesh. That way we don't end up having a leak. Then we'll set mesh and then index count is equal to the index count. Cool, so we've created a mesh. To use this mesh now, we want to go ahead and draw it, so we'll do void draw mesh. And it will take in a mesh pointer. And then we can do GL draw elements. And then triangles. Triangles. And then we'll use the same parameters before index 16 bit, texture 32 bit, F, color 888. And then vertex 32 bit. And transform 3D. We'll also supply the mesh index count, the mesh indices, and then the mesh data. And that's all we need for this function. So now we can draw the mesh to the screen and we'll also have a function here to destroy the mesh. So mesh pointer mesh. So all we'll do is free mesh data, free mesh indices, oops, free mesh indices, and then through the mesh itself. That's all we need to do to finish our mesh, uh, our mesh code. So now we have this functional structure called a mesh that we can use to store uh, data. So the next thing we will cover is using this mesh in a sprite. A sprite is a 2D texture object to draw onto the screen. It needs a position, size, and a texture. And for our sprites, we can also define things like rotation and its Z position or the layer. The sprite will be built upon this mesh that we've just created. So if we define it as a structure, type def struct, we'll call it sprite. 
We have a floating point x, y, that's our position. We have a rotation, and we have the size x and the size y. We also have uh, a layer, which is our z position. This can be useful for uh, certain rendering algorithms, and you'll just have to change your uh, depth test to be true here if you're going to use it. And then we can do mesh pointer, mesh, and then we'll have texture pointer, text. So there we go, we have a fully defined sprite. To create the sprite, we're also going to have a helper function here called vertex create vert. And we'll just, it's just going to basically populate a single vertex with the information we need. So inclined in color, float x, float y, and float z. So when we do creating a vert, we're going to do a vertex. Call it vert and set it equal to dot u is equal to u dot v is equal to v dot color is equal to color dot x equals x and so on and so forth. Oops. And then we just return this vert. So this is just a utility function, and you'll see why we make it in a second. The hardest part of making a sprite is probably the actual creation of the sprite. So create the sprite, uh, we'll need a float x, a float y, a float size x, and a float size y, and a texture pointer, text. So sprite pointer, sprite, this equals a malloc, size of a sprite. If sprite is null, then we'll have to return null. And then the other thing that could fail here is sprite mesh equals create mesh and then vertex count and vertex uh, and index count because sprites are generally squares we'll be doing four and six here respectively and then if sprite mesh is equal to null then we know that this has failed so then we have to free the sprite and we have to return null as well so now this is just the section where we fill out the data. So for sprite x is equal to x, sprite y is equal to y, uh, sprite rotation equals zero, sprite size x is equal to sx, sprite size y equals the size y, uh, sprite layer is equal to zero as well. Perhaps this should be here. Uh, and then we can do sprite Texture is equal to the texture that we uh, provide. And the sprite mesh index count is equal to six. Let's see. X, Y, rotation, S, X, X, Y, layer, texture, and mesh indices. Cool, all that is now set. In here now, what we're going to do is we're going to have to do a vertex pointer. This will be sprite mesh data. So we want to convert this to our vertex pointer. And then we will be using, and then we will have to set each vertex. So to set each vertex, we'll do zero. So the, the array at zero, we'll create a vertex, let's see here. Zero, zero, and then we'll use zero. FF, 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 that's white. And then we can do negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.0. So this is going to be similar to what we already did. So we'll create one, two, three, four. So zero, one, two, three here. And then this is going to be the same data that we had beforehand, but now it's just going to be in this format. And the reason why this is, this is a better format than just having it hard coded uh, is that in this, uh, if you wanted, you could set custom parameters inside of the vertices here that you can't do uh, on something compile time based. So for example, if we had another thing here called unsigned and color, so we could then set the color directly here. And this is something that you wouldn't be able to do. So if we were to create sprites and have a bunch of different colors, it would just work out perfectly over here. So zero one, there we go. And then it follows the same pattern inside of the data here. 
The other thing we gotta set is we gotta set the indices. So sprite mesh indices. And then zero, zero, two, three, four, five, six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. And the numbers were zero, one, two, two, three, zero. This is the data that we had earlier. So then we'll also do a write back and validate all. And the reason we have to do this is, as I explained earlier in a different tutorial, uh, the data cache uh, will not necessarily always be synchronized back to the uh, the PSP itself. So when it, uh, we try to read from uh, this mesh data, the GPU doesn't is not aware of what the CPU cache has in it. So we have to make sure it's written down onto the disk. And then we'll return the sprite. So there we go, we got create sprite. That was the main idea of creating a single sprite. We'll do a couple more things here now. So the other one that we'll have is void draw the sprite. So draw a sprite using sprite pointer sprite. So what we'll do here is that we're going to set it to the transformations that it requests inside of the structure. So we're going to do GL matrix mode is equal to GL model. We're going to load the identity to reset it. And we'll create a PSP F vector three. So this will be our transform or translate, sorry. Uh, X is equal to the sprite X. The Y is equal to the sprite Y. This should be commas, my bad. And Z should be equal to the sprite layer. We can do GLU translate with VS reference. We can do a rotate on Z with sprite rotation. That's the value. And then we'll create another S here for scale. And X equals sprite. Sx, y equals sprite, sy, and dot z equals 1.0, because uh, it's a flat plane, you can't really scale it. And I have a bad habit of typing the wrong operator there. So then glu scale reference to the s, so that we pass it in. And then we'll do bind texture, so we'll bind the sprite texture, and then we'll draw the mesh with a sprite mesh. And then we'll create one more function here, and this will just be for destroying the sprite. And destroy mesh, sprite, mesh, and then free the sprite. And that's all we need to do for our sprites. This is a pretty simple thing to implement. It didn't take that much time, and the code is all something that we've already seen before. Uh, it's just putting it together in an, a much nicer fashion. So to add sprites, we're going to do sprite pointer, sprite equals create, uh, create sprite. And then we'll do zero, zero as our position. We'll set one, one as our uh, size, and we'll pass in the texture here. Uh, I'm going to remove that unsigned int color because we were not using that currently. So, as far as I remember, right? We didn't set that, right? Okay, yeah. So there we go, we got Sprite. If not Sprite, we're going to just go to the cleanup. Sure, crucify me for using a go-to, it's whatever. Uh, and then we'll do destroy Sprite here and we'll destroy the Sprite. So, to render our Sprite, all we gotta do is now Drop in a draw sprite and put in our sprite. Ah, I have a small typo here. Mesh data, uh, if mesh data is null or if mesh indices are null, we get rid of it. There we go. And as you can see, we got our uh, sprite textures on the screen and it's doing the same thing as before because this is still using the camera rotation demo. If we want to add some sort of unique behavior here, Let's go ahead and do the sprite. And we'll do sprite.x equals sign f of camera rotation by 180. And we can do it like that. Uh, oh, sorry. It's a pointer. There we go. And if we do that, you can see that our sprite will sway side to side. As you can see, this is 
as a result of the uh, code that. So with that, we now have a way to easily generate sprites on runtime uh, without having to hard code a lot of those values. Congratulations and have a great day.